Hi, and welcome to Smoke Training. In this episode, we take a look at edit containers in Smoke 2013, what you may already know as nesting from FCP7. I'll show you how to place items into an edit container, how to access and edit these items, and the importance of the focus point inside the container. Most nonlinear editing systems give you the option of selecting a number of items on the timeline and having them treated as a single item. For instance, in FCP7, you can select any number of items and choose to nest these items. All the elements get placed into a separate timeline, yet in the master timeline sequence, they are now treated as a single clip. Smoke 2013 also has nesting. It is called containers. The container feature works in a very similar way to FCP7, but also has some more powerful advantages. Let's now take a look at the basic use of containers in Smoke. Here in the opening sequence of the timeline, we have edited some shots with an adjustment layer above, applying a grade and a letterboxing effect. We'll use containers to simplify the timeline and have this opening sequence treated as a single element. Just like an FCP7, select all the items you wish to be grouped together. Activate the right-click context menu and you'll see the option titled Contain Selection. Take note of the keyboard shortcut, Option C. If you've used nesting in FCP7 before, you'll be pleased to know Containers in Smoke has the identical keyboard shortcut. After selecting Contain Selection, you may be presented with a warning saying connect effects cannot be modified inside containers. Click confirm to continue and we'll address the connect effects issue in a moment. On our timeline we can now see that all the items have been grouped into the one item or container on the timeline. A container element on the timeline is represented by a dark blue colour. Just like an FCP7 to access the grouped items to be able to make changes to the individual edits, double click on the container element. A new tab opens up alongside your edit sequence. Notice the blue colour of the sequence tab? This indicates that you are viewing a container sequence. Inside this container timeline we see yellow in and out boundary markers which indicate the length of the clip back in the main sequence timeline. Now that we're inside the container, editing and effects can be performed as normal and changes are instantly updated back in the main sequence. There's an exception though, when we created the container we were presented with a warning stating that connect effects cannot be edited inside a container. If we try to double click a clip which contains connect effects, nothing happens. However, all is not lost. At any stage back in the main timeline, we can choose to uncontain this clip. Simply select the container clip in the timeline and choose the uncontain button located up in the effects area. The layers and individual edits are now returned so you are free to edit any of the connect effects that were applied to these clips. Then just place the items back into a new container when finished. Another great use of containers is versioning. Let's say you have a shot with maybe three or four different variations that you wish to use. If you stack all the required versions up in the timeline, you can place them into a container to keep the timeline tidy. Now double click to enter the container. Here is the key thing to remember with containers in Smoke 2013. Depending on the location of the focus point, this will determine what layer is visible back in the main timeline. So if we change the focus point location up a level in the container, now when we step back to the main sequence, a different version of the shot is visible. We could use this feature a number of different ways. You could use it to try out a number of different grades on the same shot. Maybe use it as a method of trying different takes of action. And when it comes to promos or commercials, you can store all the different graphic variations that appear at the end of the sequence inside the container. That brings to a close this episode of Smoke Training. Thank you for watching. Just a reminder about some of the key points covered in this episode. The shortcut to contain or nest items is identical to that of FCP7. Option C. To access the nested items, simply double click the container on the timeline. A new tab opens up showing the individual items. A container is represented by a tab with a blue line. An important point to remember is that the focus point inside the container will determine what is visible back in the timeline. And finally, to unnest the items, select the container on the timeline and from the effects area above the timeline, choose Uncontain. Remember, this is pre-release software. 
any features or screens shown here in this episode may be implemented differently come the final release. Head over to the Autodesk Smoke Forum at the area, as your comments can help improve and refine the software leading up to the final release. Stay tuned for future episodes of Smoke Training that provide you with short, clear tutorials to get you up to speed on the basics, fast. Yeah. <laughs>